I'm Marcus Sutcliffe. I'm in the booth all by my lonesome because we're watching Reed Duke try to take a stab here at Player of the Year. He's going to need to have a heck of a tournament to even try to make a dent, and that assumes that his main rival, Seth Manfield, one pro point above him at this point, uh, doesn't have a good tournament of his own, and he still has to fend off Luis Salvato, uh, who's one pro point behind Reed Duke. Right Players, now. you may begin. So let's get let's get underway here. Like I said Touched before, I'm going to be yep. a little bit quieter, and we're going to kind of let Reed and uh, and Chris uh, talk us through the match, and uh, I'll be interjecting things as we see fit. Reed's going to kick things off with Swamp. This is Grixis control for Reed versus Miracles. This is a control mirror. Reed leads things off with an acquisition of Kozla. Take uh, one of your counter spells. Sounds good. And then it's your turn. Reed says one of your counter spells because Chris actually has two copies of actual counter spell in his opening. Ponder. Sure. Ponder for Stinson. Keep draw. Here we go. decides not to shuffle with his pocket. Ponder. Yep. He's got a ponder of his own. He's going to keep his ponder as well. Your turn. Hard and pass the turn back to Chris. Here. Too exciting for Stitz in this turn, just because he's had passes. Snapcaster Mage. Reed's going to run out of Snapcaster Mage. He's got blue or black mana, so Inquisition of Puzzle like or Ponder are possible. There's our Reed's eye view. Uh, now Reed knows that Chris has another copy of Counterspell in his deck, and he may want to counter the Snapcaster Mage. It's hard, it's hard, enough, it's hard to uh, yep. counter that up. And that's exactly what's going to happen. He goes for the Tempest Counterspell. Your turn. Sure. Shuffle. Another ponder here for Chris. Brainstorm. Sure. So a lot of posturing here by our players in the early stages of game number one. This is... Uh, been three ponders and now a brainstorm resolve for our players as they try to set up the perfect hand for a matchup like this, which is a control mirror. Okay. How many cards do you have? One, two, three, four, five. Jace, Forceful, Bitch Forceful. That's your uh, 18. Uh, Reed Duke goes for the big hammer here. Reed tries to drop Jace the Lion Sculptor. Oh, and we're going to see a real counter fight here. Chris Stinson yep. says Force of Will, exiling Force of Will, but Reed has his own copy of Force of Will, and Jace the Lion Sculptor has resolved. Reed's going to brainstorm with Jace. Good turn. Fetch. 17. Uh, 
Chris is going to crack a fetch immediately. Does he have his own copy of Jace? He does! Oh, Jace the Mind Sculptor for Stins Stinson. I will fate seal myself. Mm -hmm. I will keep it. Here we go. He's going to plus Jace. Targeting himself. And keep it on top. Free brainstorm with Jason Mines Sculptor here for Duke. Ponder. Yep. And he's going to immediately ponder. That's not a really loved what he saw there. I'm going to shuffle these away. Usually, when you see a ponder after a brainstorm like that, it's because you get rid of whatever you put on top. Another land. Reed has a Gurmog Angler that he can deploy here. I'm gonna delve five for Gurmog Angler. Yep. That's what he's gonna do. He leaves Snapcaster Mage in his graveyard. Reed has Colagon's Command as one of his primary late game Monastery Mentor. card advantage agents. Ooh. Sure. Chris has Monastery Mentor. Preordain trigger. And yep. Preordain is gonna get a free monk right away. I have soldier tokens. That's how I couldn't find any monks. But, yeah, for hours. Thank you. Oops. Uh, top, bottom. Draw for your name. How many cards are you guys? Two. Okay. Things were looking pretty good for Reed a turn ago, but Jason Mind Sculptor into Monastery Mentor, and all of a sudden, not so hot. Ooh, Lightning Bolt for Duke, though. That was good timing there. He can deal with one monk, but if Chris gets to untap, it could be a disaster for Reed. He could be facing down an army. Brainstorm. Yep. Also found a thought seize now with his uh, brainstorm from Jace. So he's going to clear the way you. with thought seize to make sure that he can resolve this lightning bolt. And boy, he's going to be glad I'll he take did. Monastery mentor. There's another monastery mentor. Down to 16 life. Place. Attack Jace. Bolt. Lightning Bolt Jace. Okay, Jace is down, but he did leave him with a Monastery Mentor. Reed with two big problems Fetch that he was facing this turn. Monastery Mentor and a Jace the Mind Sculptor. He's decided that Jace the Mind Sculptor is the more urgent threat. But he is still going to need to find an answer for Monastery Mentor, and he's going to have to do it pretty quickly. Delve three for the Angler. Yep. Go. Play a Gurmog Angler. That was a big turn for Duke. He certainly turned the tide back in his direction, but he's not quite done yet. 
Monastery Mentor can get absolutely out of hand if left unchecked. One card in hand? Yep. Mind if I take a look also? There you are. I also want to point out, and I will be pointing out throughout the course of the day, that Reed, in my opinion, is the gold standard sure. for Target communication ponder. in sure. a magic game. Cast ponder triggers. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, if you want to know how a professional, a true professional, plays magic, not just from a game skill perspective, but from a how to handle yourself within a match perspective, Try watch ponder. Reed throughout the course of today and hopefully tomorrow too. 16. He verbalizes effectively everything that he does. Yes, my bad. Chad points out that Paul Rutzel is also excellent yep. in game communication, and I agree 100%. I think that Paul is in that same category as Reed. Uh, both the Jace. So 4-4 four, four, and 3-3? Three, three. Correct. This one. Here we go. So Chris Stinson, Stinson here has decided that the best plan, plan of action was to make sure to get rid of Jace the Mind Sculptor. But it did cost him a Monastery Draw Mentor yep. for free. So now we're back to no Jaces, but look at that hand from Reed. He has a Kolagon's Command in it. 15 to 16? Correct. He did end up having to delve away his uh, Snapcaster Mage, though. So he's going to have to try to leverage that card the best he possibly can. He's facing down three Monks and a Snapcaster Mage right now. Attack you. No blocks. 9 11. Your turn. Reed says go. Preordain triggers? Mm hmm. Top, bottom. Draw preordain? Yep. I also have to say that Chris is doing a very good job. Under of triggers? Yep. Making it abundantly clear exactly what he's doing. He's mentioning his triggers for the monks. Those are prowess triggers every time he casts a spell. And he's using a die to represent under. how many prowess triggers he actually has for the turn of those monks. Accumulated knowledge triggers. Um, so that would be two cards. Yes. Accumulated knowledge on the stack and read pond. That's fine. Now. And he says sure. But as you can see, Chris Ditson is absolutely going off at this point. Two cards in hand. Yeah, that's right. He's cast two, two cantrips and an accumulated triggers. knowledge, and there's a sword to plowshares. So and they start I'm pointing to those plowshares with your baleful strixes. You know they're ahead. Mm -hmm. This will be 17. Block. Yep. Reed is forced to block here. That was a lethal attack for us. So, so we just really really push to kill him. Seven. I'm at nine life. Here we go. Reed, I think, is considering using his Kolagon's command to get back a Baleful Strix and maybe make Chris of turn, discard a card. <clears throat> you discard and I'll return yes. Baleful Strix to my hands. Zero Storm. Chris tapped out, discards the Fluster Storm, so that does resolve. And Reed gets back his Baleful Strix. Yep. Gotta find something here, though. And he did. Just 9 to 11. Correct. He found Diabolic Edict. Go, Fox. 9 to 6. Go. Source of flashers. Triggers. <laughs> 14. Big combat. play there from Chris, or Saposhers takes down the angler. Diabolic Edict, you. Sure, no blocks. 12. Yeah, 12. It's your turn. Reed falls back down to 12. Remember, he gained a bunch of life. 
thinks the Swords of Plowshares are his. Go. And now he does win this race currently against the Monk. Somehow, after the dust has settled, this is what we're left with. Ooh. Triggers. There's Jason the Mind Sculptor for Chris. Sure. Reed cannot be happy about that. Brainstorm? Yep. No blocks. 10 10. Here go. Big draw step here for Duke. He finds a brainstorm. Brainstorm. Results. One, two, a lightning bolt. He also found a force of will, but no blue card to go with it, and he only gets to keep two of these. He's got to feel relieved to have found an answer for Jace, assuming that it resolved. He has enough mana to hard cast force of will as well. He also could go for him to Turok and then lightning bolt. Jace. Yeah. Attack you. So uh, ten. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, one card in hand. Yeah. So close. Reed had the. Swords it. Was one away okay. from so killing five. Yeah. But it looks like Swords of Plowshares would have broken up that anyway. Go. Ponder trigger. Um. Ten. Eight. Yep. Here go. Big draw step. <laughs> yep. You heard it from me. Big draw step coming up. Draw. What did he get? Go. Nothing. He just passed the turn back. One. Seven. 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 Here go. He found a ponder. Yep. It's got to be what he wanted to see here. With all that mana available. First round actually playing after his buys. It's going for bail for Go ahead. Reed had the option to cast another baleful strix, but decided that leaving up force of will for full price was mm -hmm. bad. Fetch, so five five. Yep. So we'll it's gonna hard cast force here. Snapcaster. Results. Target. 
cluster storm. Mm -hmm. Cluster storm trigger storm counts. Yeah, that's fine. Enough. Right, right, so storm's good. good. So Chris is going to use Snapcaster Mage and Fluster Storm to counter the force of will. And that means the brainstorm's going to resolve. Storm's trigger. Okay, six. On a sword, so plowshares. And then I'll hit you for four. This is going to knock two. Reed down to one? Here we go. No, Swords of Plowshares put him back up to six. Reed's going to be a two life. Draw a card? Yep. Reed needs something here. He is facing potentially lethal. I would say likely lethal. Go. He, he needs Chris to draw a land. Three. Kind of one. Yep. Which he did not. Here we go. Or which he must have, I should say. Big top deck from Duke. What does he find? Oh, it looks like he found a Kolagon's Command. It has to be one, one of the best in draws in his in deck. And could be a counter spell in hand for Chris. It could be a land. One to five. Something that he couldn't proactively cast to pump up the monk. That was a huge draw for Reed. He's at one life. Two damage here in return. Baleful Strix land. Results. And it resolves. Reed's still alive. Draw. Yep. He finds a brainstorm too. Go ahead. It's gonna pass the turn. Here you go. Reed has two lands brainstorm. and a brainstorm, yep. and he's forced to just run it out there. He doesn't currently have a way to shuffle because he's at one life. There's Chase the Mind Sculptor though in his brainstorm. Is he actually going to come back from being at one life here? Chris is on miracles. He does not have any way to deal direct damage. Reed gets rid of the somewhat obvious land left in hand there for Stinson. Stinson yep. would never have let Kolagon's one to five. Resolve. Yeah, right, that was fine. Hit you for one. Uh, four. Wow, Reed resolves Jason Mind Sculptor, Fate Seals targeting Chris, and says, You may keep that one. Oh, I'm sorry. He is not allowed to attack with the right. Strix. It did come into play this turn. Yeah. GRB. That's fine. Thank you. You heard the judge say GRB, which is a game rule violation for terminus. Reed. And it's a miracle terminus for Stitson. Wow. Are you sure about that, Judge? Because I thought I cast. I thought I cast him to Tarak and Jace this turn. You Culligan's on his turn. I I used the Culligan's command. I killed his monk and returned this and cast this. And then this is the following turn where I played him and Jace. Oh wait, you're right. Continue. Ignore me. It's okay. Thanks for looking out. So, so down to four. That's that's that's, that's <laughs> yeah, a fine that's solution. Fine. Okay. All right. Turn this. All right. So they got yeah. that sorted out. Reed looked down at his lands and said, "Wait." I Cast this this turn at all. Counting this. Well, I'm glad they got that sorted out because as we can see here, one point of damage can be the difference. Oh. Brainstorm. Yep. Reed's gonna be proactive. He's gonna brainstorm rather than feed you. And he finds a Gurmog, Angler, Snapcaster, four, Mage, and yep. Kolagon's Command. Snapcaster, Bolt you. Put you to one. And then I'll Kolagon's Command for two more damage. Kolagon's Command to the head, and Reed Duke wins game number one in a flurry of late game card advantage, facing down a lethal board state multiple times this game. Worked his way through and eked out a win. Great stuff from Reed. Really good game by both players. And it came down to just one damage point. <laughs> That's a good way to start our day, wasn't it? Okay, we had a chance to ask Reed himself how he sideboards for this matchup. Let's hear what he had to say. Three Surgical Extraction, two Pyroblast, two Flusterstorm, Marsh Casualties, Toxic Deluge, Liliana the Last Hope, Ensnaring Bridge, then the Blast, Blue Elemental Blast, Hydra Blast, Red Elemental Blast, and finally Pithing Needle. Read the matchup is Miracles. Let's look at your sideboard plan. This is about as traditional as it gets in terms of being a control mirror. I want to take out my one-for-one -one creature removal cards and focus on 
the cards that are going to allow me to win a key counterspell fight, you know, for example, over Jace the Mind Sculptor on turn four or five. Uh, so Red Elemental Blast is as good as gold, particularly when you combine it with Snapcaster Mage. And then Flusterstorm and Liliana are at least upgrades over my uh, one for one creature based cards. Miracles is obviously a control deck. You're playing a control deck. So what recommends yours, Grixis Control, over a deck like Miracles? Well, in the heads up matchup, I like Grixis because of the presence of Him the Turok and Red Elemental Blast, whereas Miracles has fewer two for one cards and they have a lot more creature removal, you know, Swords to Plowshares and Terminus. But against the field at large, Miracles has some different strengths from Grixis. I still like Grixis because of the, uh, the diversity of disruption, having access to both discard and permission, and just the nice proactive draws of, okay, I'm going to go Thought Seize him and play a Planeswalker. to the feature match here, here at GP Richmond. We are following the, the one and only Reed Duke on his entire way through this tournament for the rounds uh, where you've got me. He's going to be in the main match. For the others, he will be your time walk match. I will keep. He's up a game here against Chris Stitson playing Miracles. Reed's on Grix's That's control. You got to hear his uh, here you go. Good luck. sideboard guide. Let's see how it works out for Reed. Go ahead. Chris has played land and put Ponder on the stack. Reed is responding, though. Two copies of Flusterstorm. And he's going to use Flusterstorm Counter. right now. Here we go. Counter a Ponder. Chris off. Draw a card. Your turn. And a turn fetch. Uh, 19. 19, 19. Solve a brainstorm here on M step. Reed says I'm fine with that. And here's back sure. to basics yeah. though for Stitson. You see that Chris has uh, played two basic lands and fetched mm -hmm. one out with his flooded strand. 18. And now he's gonna force Reed to do some basic land finding of his own. He doesn't have one. Does bring in Pyroblast Destroy though, blue permanent. and that's what he's going to do. One. Destroy target blue permanent. Uh, 18, 18, right? Yep. Who needs Three basics? Turn. Counterbalance. Thank you. Yep. Another haymaker here from Chris. Counterbalance, okay. not what it once was. It's still, a potentially potent card in the matchup. And here's Jace the uh, Mind Sculptor. The counterbalance trigger fetch. 17. So there's a trigger on counterbalance, and Chris is really hoping to flip his own copy of Jace here. With two in your hand? With two in my hand. Thinking. Okay. does have a copy of Jason in hand, which means that Brainstorm can put it back on top of the library and 
counter leads. Time out trigger. Jeez. One. Huge play for Chris there. 16. Yeah. Go. Jason. He just windmills his own Reason. Jason Line Sculptor. Reed can do nothing about it. Wow, Chris Ditson really dropping the haymakers now. Back to basics. Counterbalance. Jason Line Sculptor. Consecutive turns. Has another copy of Jason Line Sculptor. It was awesome. Now they both have one. Great storm. Yep. I'll take your chase for one. Charge version of this matchup with both players having Jason Mind Sculptor to sculpt uh, their hands like every single time. Puts me to uh, 15. 15. Alright, that's fine. Chris. Brainstorm. Response to the counterbalance trigger. Brainstorm. Okay. See a sorts of plowshares there that he can use to counter Reed's brainstorm. He's also got a fluster storm he could do the same with. Reveal. Okay. Mentor results. Bonder trigger. Mm hmm. This one may be slipping away from Reed. Sculpture from Duke for free. Him to rock. Yeah, let's get a die out. For the one you keep, sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Sounds keep good. that one. Yep. So one. So keep that. Discard the other two. Ooh. That's some action there. Good. I'll attack your chase. Target him to Turok. Yep. Bounce your monastery mentor. And look at this play from Duke. 17. He's going to resolve. He's attempt to resolve. <laughs> it's kind of 
funny. I think the card left, though, was Flusterstorm. And it is! With all those spells. Kind of shuffling, and then it's your turn. He has plenty enough to counter the Himpaturok, and that plan from Reed Duke does not work out. He needed to hit that Flusterstorm with the first Himpaturok, and he didn't. One card in hand? Yep. Pretty sure. Mentor. Mm -hmm. Cumulative knowledge trigger. Yep. Source of plowshares trigger. So 19. Yeah, and three of J's. And as we've seen we in previous turns, Chris gets on tap with that mentor. Things get ugly very Over. quickly. For I will respond to the trigger. Fetching 14. now with only 14 minutes left and this one looking pretty good for Chris they may be realizing that a game three is possible two 17 14 resolve to go two monastery mentors now for Stitson and Reed really has to find something resolve one he's gonna resolve a brainstorm without a scolding turn right yes Found a Kolagon's command, which could answer one of the mentors. It does seem like he's pretty far behind here. One. Thirteen. Thirteen. Go. Sixteen. Here we go. Next up, two damage here. Return Strix. The grind is very real with this Grixis control deck. It's all two for ones. Counter spell revealed to counterbalance. Also fetch. Fifteen thirteen. Pace of play has quickened. Looking to try to make another comeback. It was looking really bad a few turns ago, but he managed to deal with Jason Mind Sculptor. And he's got Chris down to just a monastery mentor left, and he knows his next draw step as well. Draw. Assuming that Chris wants it. It's gonna be a counter spell. Mm. Liliana. He knows there's a window for him to resolve a Liliana the last time. This could force Chris to crack the scalding turn, but he doesn't. Go ahead. And he resolves. Here you go. Chris draws the counter spell. He wanted it. Liliana the last hope. All of a sudden Plus. giving yep. Reed Duke a serious advantage here. And he's gonna pass a turn back, knowing that there's a counter spell in hand. Sure. Mystery Mentor still around. Top top. Mm -hmm. Draw. Top top with priority. So it's looking a lot closer than it was a few turns ago. Snapcaster. Got to take a look also. Yeah. It's fine. The target. How was it? Ponder. Cast Ponder trigger. It's fine. And now the avalanche of cards has begun for Stitson. He's 
Snapcast. Responder. Preordain. Snapcast. Swords. Trigger. Ponder. Swords. Bowshares. Thinking. Yep. You may need to protect this by Elfal Strix because this Monastery Mentor is enough to kill Olana. No, not quite. It's at three right uh, now. 16. Yep. That's three little bit of last hope. Five. Uh, the minus. Minus oh, to yeah, minus yeah, one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Read, yeah, read for that for a second. Uh, you go. Gonna go for him here. Him to throw up counter bounce. No, the whole funny. Reveals a counter spell that does counter the him. Um Alright, I can see the game. And you heard it from Reed, he's gonna scoop it up. He says, Judge I can't be beat this board you've got. And the reason that Reed's doing this is for time consideration. He needs to try to finish. You can feel the tension building right now already about finishing in time. Oh. The players are shuffling very quickly. Let's see if one of us just gets blown out of the water. <laughs> it's been a really good match so far. It has. I don't know. Was... I think I was a little bit too aggressive in my Jace game one, but I felt like if I could get my mentor through, it was worthwhile. But I, on summing the angle, I felt like protecting the mentor was better than protecting the Jace at that point in the game. I don't know. Whatever. I'm sure Reed has an opinion okay, on first, it. Sounds good. We'll not offer it up at this point. Two, three, six, seven. Keep center. All right, we're underway in game number three. Chris Stitson, one game number two. Going? Reed Duke with an unlikely comeback in game number one. And we're going to see who's going to be 4-0 to start things off. I'll search for an island of a 19 and cast Baleful Strix. Results. See a little bit of shortcutting here from Duke. The clock is so on a 19, I'm going to draw a card and then it's your turn. These players are going to be playing very quickly. Draw. Mm -hmm. Here, let me see your guy. Your turn. Move to discard. Sure. Wow, Chris Stitson missing a land drop, has eight cards in his hand and actually has to discard back to basics. Goodness sakes. One. 18. Go ahead. Chris did say, what if one of us just gets blown out this third Grab game? It might be him. Us. If he's not able to find some lands here. Your go. And he misses his land drop again. All he can do is power blast away the Baleful Strix. End step. Brainstorm. It's good. We get to resolve brainstorm on end step with two fetch lands available. So fetch eighteen. Pulling further and further ahead, but there's a land for Chris. Here you go. <coughs> Reed still with nothing meaningful on board, however. Go ahead. Fetch 
17. Five minutes on our round clock here. Players are playing blisteringly quick. We're going to see forcible hard cast on that monastery mentor. That is the type of card that Reed really needs to keep off the battlefield at all costs. His mana advantage may prove worthwhile. Fluster Storm struck out too, so three mana. Fluster Storm from Stitson. Yep. Here you go. And Reed doesn't fight. But he does have Jason Light Sculptor. That's this. Pass. Fire Blast. Here we go. Players continue to trade resources pretty quickly here. Results. Targeting him to Turok. Him you. Give me an open snapcaster. Him was awesome. How many cards left in your hand? Two. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the one you keep. So keep the middle. Pass. So that's first AK? Yes. Drop the turn. Mm -hmm. Chase. AK, of course, is accumulated knowledge. Uh, sure. I'm going to brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And Jason Mind Sculptor hits for Chris. There you go. Has he drawn out of his mana issues? Perhaps redo Draw. flooding yep. out a little bit. Thoughts easier. you. Take the swords. I'm at 15. 15, 15, right? Yeah. Brainstorm. Thoughts yep. sees swords to plowshares, but there's a brainstorm follow up here for Duke. And he finds a Snapcaster Mage, as well as a Force of Will. And to him the Turok. Fetch, fetch. 13. 13. Just under three minutes left on the clock. Uh, Snapcaster, Pyroblaster, Jace. I'm going to attack you for two. Down to 13. And then after that, it's your turn. So Reed uses that Snapcaster Fetch. Mage to get Down rid of Jason Mind Sculptor well. and attack for a couple. He's ahead on board with five power. He's facing 13, down 12. nothing from Chris, Correct. having ground his port state into dust. Sorry. Players are playing very quickly. And there's back yeah, to basics now from Stitson. Though, is it too late? Draw. Yeah. Five. Uh, seven. Go. Big turn here for Stitson. Yeah, He's got to find sure. something. Preordain accumulated knowledge. Keep them both. Draw. Mm -hmm. Accumulated knowledge. Draw True. two. Two. Here we go. Five. Uh, two. Go. Reed draws Liliana the Lasso, but he can't cast it. Monastery Mentor. Results. There oh, and there's a Monastery Mentor for Stitson. He is facing lethal, however. Brainstorm trigger. Brainstorm trigger means that he has two blockers for the Snapcaster Mages. A big draw step there from Stitson hitting a spell he can cast at instant speed. If he had hit a land there, the game would be over and the match would go to Duke. Reed considering using Force of Will to counter the Brainstorm itself, but the damage has been done. He will have oh, Chris will. down 12. to one, though, yep. thanks to the Baleful Strix attack in the air after Sorry, Chris blocks. Sure. You're at one? Yep. All right, this could be it. Go ahead. Go ahead, he says. Chris needs to draw something. Source of plowshares. And he draws Source of plowshares off the top. 13. 3. 10. Uh, I had you at... I probably mod... 10. 10 it is. 
done. What a draw from Chris. Pay two life. Eight. And Reed's gonna wipe the board with Go. Toxic Deluge, and we're back to nothing on board. Here we go. Go. Red Elemental Blast there from Reed. Here we go. Counterbalance resolves. There's a land off the top. That's gonna give him access to Jace, the Mind yep. Sculptor. Fate Shield you. Correct. Yep. Go. And Here we go. we're approaching time in the round. Okay, so. Back to play. Yeah. Uh, did you just pass the turn? I. Did. Yes. Go um, blue card pass. Yes. Okay. So. So he said go. I have not untapped. He sh he called okay. time. Okay. Then uh, that was turn zero, and we'll go into a turn. Okay. All right. So you have two cards in your hand. Two cards. I'm going to untap for turn one. I'm going to draw. You're in one life. I am at one life. Okay. Just double checking. You're at one Thing. life, right? Reed has access to cards like Lightning Bolt and Colagon's Command that can kill Chris. Also, a Baleful Strix would be enough in the air. We are in extra turns now, though, here in round number four. found a fetch three. land so he could get red mana and he finds a lightning bolt he does have to get through the counterbalance kind of awkward for reed being stuck with no red mana sources and the potential to get one with his uh, scalding tarn because he actually has red elemental blast that could take care of the Counterbalance just to make sure. And then he could resolve a lightning bolt, but he can't do both. Go. And it's Jace the Mind Sculptor off the top of the library for Stitson. Mm. Is this the time to go for it? Sure. Sounds okay. Great, sir. Sure. This is turn two. Oh, you can see the look on Reed's face. Pyroblast. It's going to take care of Jason Mind Sculptor. Plays two Under. volcanics, two badlands. Here you go. No mountains. Seven. Scalding Tarn's going to knock Reed down to seven. That's the lethal lightning bolt in hand. Can he get it through? Draw. Yep. He finds a bloodstain mine. Will that give him a second red mana source? If he tries to destroy the counterbalance with the red elemental blast and it gets countered, then he'll know that his lightning bolt would also not resolve. Looking through his graveyard here. Six. He's cracking the bloodstain mire. Should have another volcanic. There it is. Red 
Blaster Jace. All right, he's going to find out either way, and it's Snapcaster Mage on top. Reed can go for it. Yeah. Lightning Bolt you, and that's going to do it. Reed Duke wins the match two games to one in turn four of extra turns. Boy, they made that one exciting for us. My goodness sakes alive. Whoa. Welcome back to the booth here at GP Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Our little experiment got off to nice start there with a fantastic match between Reed Duke and Chris Ditson as we got to get down into the feature match area and kind of sit you, that's the idea, right? Sit you right next to where our players are actually playing. And my goodness, that was a close one. About as close as you can possibly get. Fantastic magic from both players. And uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. What we're going to do right now, though, is take a short commercial break. When we come back, though, I'll have Reed sitting next to me, and we get to talk about some of the plays that happened during the course of that one, and then maybe even do some time walk. We'll see you in just a little bit. <laughs> 